Hi everyone and welcome to day 31 of What on Earth Am I Here For? Today we're going to be understanding your shape. Psalm 139.13 says, You shaped me first inside then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. Guess what? Only you can be you. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts and different abilities to perform the service. But you have to apply your abilities. Some people are good with words, some people are good with math, some people are good with people skills. God wanted to create the tabernacle, and guess who he used? The most skillful and knowledgeable of all craftsmen. Now, it says in the Bible, anyone who is good in his skill shall soon be serving kings. And for whatever skill is natural and given to you, you have... Um, a sort of responsibility to the world to hone it as best you can, to serve people as best you can. And soon you will be serving the best of the best. And money will just come because that is the way of the universe. All of our abilities come from God. God has given us each an ability to do something well. And... Can you just imagine there are 100 trillion facts that your brain can store. It can make 15,000 decisions in a second. It can also manage everything that's happening inside your body. Your nose can smell up to 10,000 different smells. Your touch can detect an item one over 25 thousandth of an inch thick. And your tongue can taste one part of quinine in two million parts of water. You are a bundle of incredible abilities and already amazing as you are. Repeat after me. I am enough. I am perfect. And the best part is, I am loved. Yes, you are enough. You are perfect. And you are loved. Even Nick Vujic, who actually doesn't have limbs is made perfect for his purpose and that's inspiring all of us who have complete limbs on the things that we can do and accomplish every ability can be used for god's glory so whatever you do do it all for the glory of god there are different abilities so don't be impatient instead try everything that you are interested in Because it's only by trying and doing that we actually participate in life and we actually learn to do things better. God gives some people abilities that are natural, but a lot of the things that God gives are just interests. And from the interests, we grow them to become discipline. And from discipline, it becomes excellence. So don't be afraid if you're not amazing at something at the first try because everybody has to put in the effort to get to be a professional that's what it is right 10,000 hours that's what that's what they're saying now for the work that we give God says that we should give tithes we should be kingdom builders also instead of wealth builders I think what this means is that we have to be aware that we are part of a greater whole of humanity, of our brothers and sisters. And the more we work to help others, and the more we work with an awareness that we are all just helping each other in this great, beautiful world, the more we can build a truly just and peaceful kingdom. So what we're able to do, God wants us to do. And this goes for almost all things that are good and righteous in the world. Now, God does not want you to steal or do bad things, of course. All work or service is good. But bad things are just bad. And to use your talents for taking from others or cheating others is a disgrace so please do the good things shape using your personality do you guys know that the number 
of DNA molecules can be united in 10 to the 2.4 billionth power. That number is the likelihood that you'd ever find somebody like you. But if you write it down on paper, with the number of each zero being one inch wide, you need 37,000 miles of paper. To put it in perspective, some scientists have guessed that all the particles in the universe are probably less than 10 with 76 zeros behind it. Far less than the possibilities of you having someone exactly like you. That means your uniqueness is a scientific fact of life. God made you and he broke the mold when he did it. There will never be anybody like you. It's so obvious that God loves variety and he puts that kind of premium on who you are and what you can do in this world. He's not just some factory mechanical um, creator that makes one thing 10 million times. No, each person is a work of art. Each person is irreplaceable. And each person is valuable. The Bible gives us plenty of proof that God uses all types of personalities. So if you're shy, don't worry. God has a purpose for you. If you're the type of person who loves staying outdoors, yes, your purpose is probably related to that. There's no right or wrong temperament for serving God. But one thing is for sure, when you found the thing that you want to do in the world, that that thing that's important to your heart, to change and when you're actually doing it it's going to be the best feeling in the world because you will be where god wants you to be and to find this you can take a look at your family experiences what did you learn growing up what is important to you what about your education what were your favorite subjects or what was something that just took your interest and dimmed everything else what are your vocational experiences what have you seen growing up or what are you good at what are your spiritual experiences or how are you suited when dealing with people do you feel most comfortable in a leadership position or do you feel most comfortable as a guider or a teacher And most especially, what are your painful experiences? Because most often than not, after we overcome our pain, we become the best tour guides for others to go through theirs so that they can go overcome the pain that they have, that they would know that they are not alone in the world. And and a lot of times, like I said before, the areas of our greatest pain would be the areas of our greatest service. Know that the more authentic you are and the faster you heal your own pains through God and the more you let God into your life, the faster you will evolve into someone that can serve others very well. And I guess that's part of the reason why we are given challenges. So we can have ammunition to help others go through their pain. Nobody else can be you. God has given each of us some special abilities to be sure to use them to help each other. Passing on to others God's many kinds of blessings. 1 Peter 4.10 What God-given ability or experience can I offer to my church? What is the area of my greatest pain? And how can I help others? What is something, an issue, a cause that matters to me greatly? What can I do? What problem do I see in the world? And what can I do to change it? Hey, 
you can change it. God bless you and I love you.